This is Learn From Others, where we interview a cross-section of successful individuals so you can learn from their experiences, achievements, and even their mistakes. We ask four questions that will educate and inspire. Greg Stanley will be your guide as we join our guests on a journey from adolescent daydreaming to success in today's world. Join us on this adventure as we learn from others together. Welcome to Learn From Others, where we help others succeed by sharing success. I'm very excited to introduce our special guest, Stephanie Esau. Stephanie, thank you for taking us on your career journey. Thanks for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. No problem. Well, before we find out what you're doing today, let's start at the very beginning. And can you please tell us, what did you want to be when you grew up? Oh, wow. So when I grew up, I thought I wanted to be a lawyer, actually. I think I got really hooked on John Grissom books really young. Um, <laughs> Those were so awesome. That's what it was like. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so I always thought I wanted to be, you know, a lawyer. Um, and then I found out that that required a lot of extra school. And I was like, eh, I don't really know if I want to do that so much. So. <laughs> <laughs> You really like the John Grissom books. Those are an easy read. Like you could read those on a weekend away somewhere. Absolutely. Yeah. And always good film adaptations too. So. Right. They were. Right. Well, what was your first job or one that you really felt like you had responsibilities and you wanted to put your best foot forward? Great question. Um, I, um, so typically, uh, you know, most, most kids start out like babysitting and stuff. So that was definitely one of the first things I did. But I would consider my first job job like selling Girl Scout cookies. Troop 1804 in Baltimore, Maryland. Shout we, out. Um, Shout out. Nice. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we sold Girl Scout cookies, and I um, I really wanted to go after our um, our team goal. Um, I think my mom probably bought so many Girl Scout cookies that we had them in our freezer for so long. Um, but I really enjoyed, like, standing outside of grocery stores and talking with people. And I don't know, it's probably in, like, fourth or fifth grade. But I guess that kind of led itself to, to sales and stuff today. But, yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. So were you one of the big winners? Because I know that can get pretty ruthless there with those little Girl Scouts. <laughs> yeah, I was not. I mean, I would say uh, uh, I was very aspirational in my goals, but certainly not to the extreme of uh, of anybody like nationally or anything like that. It was more of a personal objective. So Those Samoas, right? Samoas, those are my favorite. Uh, uh, yes, and the Thin Mints. Those freeze very well. <laughs> and the Tagalongs. Tagalongs, I like those yes. a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're good. So what was your first real job where you got a paycheck? My first real job was about 15 years old. I didn't quite have my driver's license, and I worked at Clay's Park, which is activity. It's like a seasonal uh, water park, but it's like a lake as well up in Northeast Ohio. And so I uh, helped run and manage the activity shed for kids. So basically, if you were there on the beach or enjoying the water park with your family. The kids could take a little break, um, you know, when the lifeguards took their, you know, break every hour or whatever and come up and do crafts in this activity shed. Okay. So you were in the so activity would, shed working mm -hmm. with different groups of kids? Yep. Yep. Um, and so we do, you know, sometimes we do structured crafts. Um, other times it was just coming in and letting them play and get a breather from swimming and stuff. And so that, I did that this summer in between my uh, sophomore and junior year. Now, did you have a favorite subject or hobby in school? I did. So, you know, I think the overall area that I kind of gravitated towards was social studies. So just kind of all through high school and elementary school, I really enjoyed like history, government. I really like to, I love to read. I don't get to read as much as I want to anymore, but uh, I just loved to be, uh, you know, kind of a lifelong student, if you will. My favorite class was actually my high school economics teacher, and I learned a ton from him just overall. It was a great blend, I thought, of looking at historical economic events as well as uh, as well as what was going to happen in the future. So I thought that was a great class, Great gave a lot of great relevant business learning as well. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So you... We're a little Girl Scout selling cookies, and then you kind of managed, you know, worked with people in the craft room activities area, and you enjoyed the social study. So tell us, what are you doing today? And if you would walk us through kind of like your resume, what education you received and the different positions that led you to where you are. So today, my, uh, my role is I lead sales um, as the vice president of sales in the East for MizCon America. MizCon is a privately held company. They're actually based in Japan, 200-year-old company in Japan, and their Americas group is based out of Chicago. So I work out of my house, um, and then I travel to the various customers along the East Coast. So I've got, you know, uh, responsibilities for customers anywhere from Virginia up through Maine over to kind of Minnesota area and also Canada, which is really fun and different for me. And what does Ms. 
Tandu. Um, you're probably wondering, like, I've never heard of that brand before. We sell um, ragu and Bertoli pasta sauce. So when you see ragu pasta sauce on the shelf, that's me, and as, as well as the Bertoli brand. So really fun brands. And, you know, I've kind of worked with brands throughout my career. I went to um, college at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. So shout out to the Tar Heel. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I did end up majoring in economics here, so I really enjoyed that because it gave a lot of great opportunities for me to learn. And then from there, I did a couple of internships with Enterprise rent so I did that in the summer of uh, my junior year. So uh, you do anything from leasing cars to washing cars in a suit in the middle of the North Carolina heat. Um, <laughs> so that's very good character building. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so you learn a lot, meet a lot of really cool people. Uh, then I kind of dabbled into marketing a little bit, uh, working for a company that published Yellow Pages, and I'm sure half of the listeners of your podcast have probably never heard of Yellow Pages before or never um, opened up their Yellow Page. So, um, <laughs> Give us a brief <laughs> overview. What are Yellow Pages? <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, okay, back before the internet, <laughs> therefore, you didn't have a way to look up things, right? You didn't have a way to look up you know, somebody's phone number. You had to actually go to this big book. And look it up alphabetically or perhaps via ad and say, hey, I need to call somebody for, you know, plumbing or <laughs> I need to call an electrician. And that's how you would look it up. It's just a book instead of getting on Yelp and looking at how many reviews they have. Uh, <laughs> so that's what the Yellow Pages are. Uh, and that's why I didn't finish at that uh, internship. I did not uh, pursue a full-time job there. Instead, I got recruited by Kraft Foods on campus at North Carolina and started working in the stores. Um, and I was a sales rep for the first two years, really like understanding what the uh, uh, what the stores were doing on a day to day basis. I was doing everything from writing orders to interacting with the the receiver, and I was stocking shelves. Got in really great great shape because. Cases of Oreos are very heavy. Um, if you've ever listed 12 at a time, not just one at a time in your mouth, but 12 <laughs> cases of those or 12 packages of those at one time, they're uh, it's pretty hefty. So, yeah, so I did that for a couple of years, um, moved into an insights role where I was taking a lot of what I learned at the shelf and trying to figure out how to make that work for, for our customers and, and bring that kind of insight to life um, to sell more cases. Uh, and so I did that for a couple of years in the Charlotte area, got a chance to go to Walmart and uh, sell to um, what was our largest customer in the U.S. So that was really interesting. So um, that was with Kraft calling on Walmart. Yes. Okay. Yes, the so same role. So instead of working with um, what they called a customer category manager with a regional customer like Harris Teeter, um, I went to go work for a national customer. So very similar, you know, kind of go-to-market strategies, but just on a much bigger scale, which was good and bad, right? Learned a lot, but if you made a mistake, it was a lot more impactful, uh, not only to the business, but to the entire company, as if you uh, uh, as if you were at a smaller customer. So, uh, so good experience, and glad that I had the smaller background first. Right. That experience, you can translate, grow it to bigger volume, bigger dollar sales at a large customer, Absolutely. right? And see how they yep. work at a larger scale. So, great experience you received there. Yeah. And then from there, again, this is, it, you kind of notice a pattern here. It's kind of building on each other, right? So then after learning, you know, how one of our largest customers works nationally, then I went to go work out of our business unit um, in Chicago and try to plan for multiple customers across multiple channels for our mac and cheese business. And that was one of my favorite jobs. You not only worked with the folks in the field calling on customers, but I also got a chance to kind of dabble in marketing and supply chain and, you know, finance. I learned a lot there. So, you know, just exposure to a lot of different functional areas that I would not have had just kind of staying the traditional field sales route, Um, which I think ultimately, you know, kind of made me a better salesperson as I went back into the field a couple years later. I did a category sales center job, moved into an associate director role, and then I went back out into the field to lead our cheese team for Kroger. So all those experiences that I had in the BU, again, kind of building on each other to lead our cheese business for one of our largest customers in the U.S. So that was a lot of fun. I did that for the last two years before I joined Ms. Tom, now selling uh, pasta sauce to uh, most of the eastern U.S. You have a very cool career path. So let me recap it and correct me when yeah. I'm wrong here. So an internship, which I think is a great way to start, Absolutely. that let, right, that led into an entry-level role 
kind of the nuts and bolts, here's how things function at store level, that led to a calling on a smaller customer role. So you're growing your responsibilities, you're growing you know, what you need to do from a day and day perspective, the impact you have, because now you're not impacting a store, you're impacting a chain of stores. And then you transitioned up to Walmart, which is a much larger chain of stores. And then you transitioned to headquarters, coordinating from a brand perspective and interacting across a much larger geography as a brand person. Was that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, as a brand uh, kind of represent, I was the voice of sales for that brand, right? So say we wanted to launch a new mac and cheese product. I had an, the ability to provide some perspective on, hey, this is what it's going to look like on a shelf or, hey, this is what the customer is going to think about how you have it right. You know, we should launch it in this window because most customers are going to reset their shelves in that time frame. So I was using all of my sales. I was the sales expert in the room, if you will. So I was providing that uh, perspective. Yeah. Then all that experience led to going back into field, which basically means calling on customers directly. And you were exactly. with yep. Kroger, a large customer with a large brand. So kind of both. Yeah the best of both worlds there, and then transitioning yeah. into what you do today. I must admit, I did have to look up your company's name. <laughs> it looks like you do uh, Japanese condiments as well. Is that we correct? We do, yeah. So Mizcon is the largest manufacturers of private label vinegar in the U.S. We also are the largest pepper um, co-packer in the U.S. We have a large plant down in Deming, New Mexico. We have kind of two sides of our business here in the U.S. We have the vinegar and pepper side, which um, is kind of separate from the sauce side, and then Ragu and Bertoli, which were acquired in 2015 from Unilever. So it's been really fun taking those big company experiences that I had at Kraft and Enterprise and with the Yellow Pages to a small company. I mean, it's a large company in Japan, but the presence in the U.S. is very small. So we've kind of taken that large company mindset and tried to figure out how we adapt our brand to a small startup, if you will, even though the company itself is over 200 years old with some of the more traditional uh, Japanese brands. So we've got a really interesting portfolio of brands. The ones you would recognize probably most commonly on shelf is that, you know, Regu and Bertoli pasta sauce. So. Yeah, I, I see those two and I don't think Japanese, but, you know, <laughs> it's yeah. the way the world is. <laughs> Right, right. Okay. Well, before we move on to our next question, let's take a moment to hear from our sponsors. Do you enjoy your job and find it fulfilling? Or do you spend more time wondering what if instead of what's next? If so, contact Career Spa. Career Spa has extensive programs and curriculum and understands the challenges faced by individuals in transition. They can teach these success practices to be mastered for an effective job search. Answer that what if question by contacting Career Spa and asking their experts what's next. Contact Career Spa at careerspa.net. Talent acquisition is key to building a successful organization. Talent Connections is a professional services firm that specializes in recruiting, including executive search, contract recruiting, talent acquisition consulting, and recruitment process outsourcing. Whether you are an individual or a Fortune 100 company, Talent Connections can connect you with success. Contact them at talentconnections.net. Welcome back. We just learned what you wanted to be when you grew up and what you are actually doing today. So if you could do it all over again, what would you do differently? Oh, you know, I don't know if I wouldn't necessarily do anything different in my career background. I think back actually to my education um, and in college. What I wish I would have taken advantage more of um, were two things. One, study abroad. Um, hmm. There's never going to be a cheaper way to both learn abroad and also get a chance to travel and see other com uh, countries. Um, I never went overseas and did any um, international travel until I was well into my 30s. Um, my husband and I went to Europe for our wedding anniversary one year, and we thought, man, we should have started this a long time ago. We should have done this in college. So I would highly, highly recommend folks take advantage of study abroad opportunities as they're looking at college options. Figure out how to work that in, whether it's a semester or a summer or just even a break that you could do over like a Christmas or holiday break. Take advantage of that because it's never going to be cheaper. And it's a great way to learn other cultures, and it makes you very adaptable. The other thing I would do is explore a little bit more with my collect my electives in college. So take maybe some create like one of the classes I've even thought about taking now, even though I'm well out of school or with my undergraduate and graduate degree, is like taking a creative writing class or taking a photography class. You know, take something that's a little different for an elective that maybe you wouldn't have dabbled in before. 
Um, you can always drop it if you go the first day and you don't like the you know, uh, <laughs> professor or the syllabus looks a little too daunting, right? But you know, I wish I would have taken more of those kind of creative classes to just find some new hobbies that I maybe uh, I've never tried before. No, that's great so, advice. I would, I would definitely do those. Mm-hmm. Yeah, both of those are really great. I had a chance to visit a friend that was studying abroad and amazing what they were learning, not only from school, but also from the culture as well. So that's really cool. Absolutely. Yeah. So those would be the two things I would change. So let's make the assumption that someone wants to do what you're doing. What advice would you give them? And is there a typical career path? So from a typical career path, and this is probably going to sound a little generic, there's not necessarily one. But I would say by and large within the food industry um, or what we call, you know, consumer packaged goods, uh, whether it's food or health and beauty Um, or something in the um, -the over-the-counter side, most folks start out in the store. So a lot of the senior leadership that I work with now at our customers, they started out in the store as well. They started out bagging groceries. They started out as a cashier. They started out, you know, pulling carts in from outside. And that is not only great work to understand just the day-to-day operations of the store, but it's also great understanding and a very humbling experience. You meet a lot of really different people working in at the store level um, at those entry-level jobs and building some really great relationships. And again, a lot of the folks that I work with now started out in those you know, kind of entry-level store jobs. And you never know who the bagger is today that might be a future vice president or somebody that's a cashier that might be someone that you work with in 10 or 15 years that could be a director of procurement. So I think it's always important to get that basic ground level understanding. And so a lot of folks that start out in the in the CPG industry start out at the very level because as I as I think was illustrated in my career path, it all builds upon each other. So I'm still using a lot of the same skills or understanding as I started out in the stores and as I'm providing myself as the uh, the kind of sales expert in the room to the cross functionals to say, look, you can't make this product this wide because it's not going to fit on the shelf or you have to have this particular pack out on shelf because otherwise the person that's stocking the shelves is going to have to go back to the back room and they're going to have to touch the product twice and that's not efficient for the stores. So a lot of those, again, kind of basic, you know, entry level opportunities have built upon itself into your knowledge base today. You know, and, and I started like you did as a cracker stacker slinging Oreos yeah. and Ritz <laughs> and everything else. And that was a fantastic job. Very manual, very aerobic, which was great. But that, you know, when I made it into management, the, the credibility was there because I had done it. So I'm, I'm leading folks that are doing it. And I think I had to sling 37 cases per hour on average, something like that. So it was hard work, but it was great wow. work. Yeah. So that's great advice. So now have you had a mentor in the past or someone that's really influenced your career? Yeah. You know, so I think I've had a lot of great mentors and folks take you know, interest in me or, you know, one of the, the things and, and that I appreciate the most about craft and being kind of entry level is that folks kind of saw something in me that I didn't quite see in myself. I think those are incredibly important to have both mentors um, and sponsors. So I've had uh, several mentors throughout my career, one of whom I'm working for today. He took an interest in my career very early on uh, when I was just coming from Charlotte, moving into the Walmart experience that I had. You know, I interviewed with him and he became kind of a person I would go to with, uh, with thoughts and advice. And throughout the course of my career, our paths crossed multiple times. He left Kraft before I did. And so now I, I have the opportunity to work with him in a new capacity as my manager. So you never know where folks that will continue to give you advice and also to vouch for you as a sponsor in the future moving forward. It's a pretty small industry um, when it comes down to it. So you end up crossing paths with a lot of similar people throughout your career. So it's also important not to burn any bridges. <laughs> right, right. Well, are there any current projects you're working on that you would like to share? So one project I am working on uh, right now that's been a lot of fun. So we have Ragu and Bertoli here in the U.S. Ragu is also up in Canada. I mentioned I have responsibility for Canada. And uh, we actually just launched Bertoli Pasta Sauce for the first time up with our uh, northern neighbors. So we launched those uh, nationwide uh, or countrywide, if you will back in May, and it's kind of been rolling out to the trade throughout the uh, throughout the year. So that's been really fun. Um, I've never managed the Canadian business before. We have a person um, based out of Canada that reports in for me, and he's taught me all kinds of things between not only how to launch a product, but 
you know, currency and what's the value of the dollar versus the Canadian. And uh, there's also been a lot of stuff in the news with um, exporting and importing products. So <laughs> tariff news, remain... maybe? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I had to remain up to speed on that. I actually was getting ready to go on vacation, and uh, my neighbor had asked me if I was bringing anything with me. And I said, oh, no, we're going you know, out of the country, so I'm, I'm going to leave my computer here. Surely there can't be a pasta sauce emergency in the middle of June. <laughs> and lo and, lo and behold, the next day, uh, some of the tariffs were announced. So uh, <laughs> I've, uh, I've learned a lot about you know, exchange rates and tariffs over the course of the last six months. It's been, it's been really interesting and, again, a piece of the business that I never touched before, um, and I continue to learn a lot more about. Yeah, it's so funny. It's been really fun. You would never think there'd be a pasta sauce emergency, but for some reason there's always emergencies you never expect. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yep, always something. Well, as with most journeys, success largely depends on reliable transportation, and since I'm a huge car enthusiast, could you tell us what was your first car? My first car was a 1992 Plymouth Acclaim. Plymouth is not even around anymore, but uh, they were a offshoot of the Chrysler brand. So it was a it was a four door sedan, basically. Yeah, uh, you know, colored 92 Plymouth Acclaim. It was my grandpa's. That's kind of funny because you're the second Plymouth Acclaim I've had on the short life of this podcast. You're the second really? one. Really? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> That's pretty funny. It was a good, reliable car. It was a great car. Right, right. It was bad when it, uh, it got hit in total. So. Oh, well, at least you were okay. So that's good. Yeah. What is your dream car? My dream car, probably the one that came to mind first, although it's incredibly impractical right now. I have two young kids, four and two, um, and so our stuff just multiplies. But one day, I would love to have an Audi convertible, um, A2, a white one with tan interior, which again, is completely impractical for me right now. Um, <laughs> two young kids. There's goldfish everywhere. There's, you know, drinks getting spilled. So one day, uh, maybe I'll, I'll have one of those. I like that. Very specific. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, one great perk to some jobs is a company car. So if I had all the money in the world, I'd like to buy you a really cool company car. And I'm basing it on your job, and I'm actually basing it on my Google search of your company, which included the Japanese condiments. So <laughs> so <laughs> hang on here with me. So my thought is, is most of your products pack a lot of power in a small package. So I was thinking spicy, yeah. you know, I mean, ragu, that's a lot of power in a larger package, but I'm going with the a lot of power in a small package. So for your cool company car, I picked you a 1967 Austin Mini Cooper S. Are you familiar with this car? Oh. Um, is that like an Austin Powers type car? It's like, it's like, it's the Mini Cooper that was in, they, they make them today. BMW makes the larger version of the Mini Cooper, Yeah. but it's the original, so the small original British one. And the reason I picked this one is because the Cooper S has extra horsepower for racing. It, it could hit 100 miles an hour. It won the Monte Carlo Rally four years in a row. So it's really cool, and it was actually voted the second most sin significant car of the 20th century behind the Ford Model T because it, it could hold four adults somewhat comfortably, and yet it was small, tiny, compact, and could run around like crazy. So super cool car. And you could fit awesome. two kids in the back with goldfish. <laughs> Hopefully the car seats all fit, right? So, probably not <laughs> well, there's no guarantee there. <laughs> so, well, thank you so much for taking us on your journey today. What's the best way our listeners can learn more about you and your company? Well, they can uh, certainly go to our website, um, Ms. Con America, or you can also go directly to the Ragu and Bertoli Pasta Sauce brand pages. Um, or always feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. I uh, love the opportunity to engage with any of your listeners if they have questions or um, want some uh, advice. Cool. Well, thank you, Stephanie, so much for your time. Awesome. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you for listening to Learn From Others, where we help others succeed by sharing success. Where will our next adventure take us? Subscribe to find out. If you know of someone who has a cool career story or occupation, contact Greg through Instagram at Greg Stanley LFO. That's G-R-E-G-S-T-A-N-L-E-Y-L-F-O. And we will see you soon as we learn from others together.